Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Nathan Mulder. I hope I got the surname right. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. And he's a juice fast coach and someone who's done over 600 days of juicing himself. He stopped counting after 600. <laughs> and his longest juice fast was 120 days. And I'll put on screen now like a before and after photo, but at his kind of peak bodybuilding bro gains mode <laughs> he was like over 220 pounds over 100 kg um before he embarked on this journey but for anyone who doesn't know you nathan can you give a little bit of context of like your journey where you were before your juice fast and what yeah the, the kind of context and what led you to embark on this juice fasting journey well um throughout the years when i was younger i was always very skinny so I didn't like being skinny, so I started eating a lot, started lifting weights and things, and that's when problems started to arise with basically eating too much, then food addiction, then a lot of bodybuilding and getting kind of problems with my digestive tract, with my body and with my health and getting a lot of issues. And that's when I started to look for alternative ways of fixing that because I realized, oh, damn, I, uh, I have problems with food addiction. I'm eating away everything I'm feeling. I'm addicted to this physically, what can I start doing to uh, fix that because it's kind of ruining my life. And this was at the time when I was like 20, 21. And I started changing my diet. So I did like a wild diet swapping goose chase where I went to every possible diet I could find. And whatever ch change I made, still the food addiction just became the new change. If I switched to, for example, uh, vegetarian it went vegetarian if I switched to plant-based it became plant-based and eventually um, I got so desperate that I was looking at anything and everything I could find and I was looking at intermittent fasting because that's something I always did I never really ate breakfast that much um, and then I discovered a guy on YouTube named John Rose and this was really in the depths where I was like st I stopped bodybuilding because I thought like maybe that was helping my mindset about like you know don't have to eat that much and things like that. And I had problems with like joints and stuff, so I can't train anymore the way I like to. Um, I wanted to switch my diet and everything. And then I discovered this guy online called John Rose by accident. Never even wanted to find anything like that. But I was researching intermittent fasting and I found a video, how often should we eat? And it was this guy that looked ripped as hell, but he was like in his 50s or 60s. So I was like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> let's, you know, let's have a listen to this. And he was talking about like, um, how you can get addicted to, to cooked foods, he said. And I thought, well, that's close enough. I'm just addicted to food in general. And he was talking about like cleaning out your body and um, that getting rid of all these problems. And I thought, hey, two birds with one stone, right? So I binge watched, no pun intended, like 30, 40 of his videos. And then I decided, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat this, this raw food thing. And I embarked on that. And it was, um, well, the first two, three weeks were pretty rough. But... Um, then after all kind of cleanse reactions, bonanzas and stuff like that, my problems started going away slowly but surely. If I stuck with it, which I couldn't always do. Sometimes I would relapse, like many times I would relapse. And then my problems came back again, like they flared up. Uh, like joint pains, like digestive problems, uh, knee pains, rashes, allergies year round. So I was like, okay, maybe there's something to what this guy is saying. Um, so I kept going on with it and kept going on with it, but always relapsing and always relapsing. I just couldn't mm -hmm. get rid of the physical addiction and I couldn't get rid of the, the emotional addiction, as I like to call it, where you're just using it to, to deal with life. And eventually I got to such a low point with this where I'm like, I'm stuck in this cycle. This was for about like two, two and a half years where I had a lot of success with this raw food thing, but then I would always relapse to junk foods and stuff like that. And then I was like, okay, well, what can I do? Um, I... At, at, in this time, I already lost a lot of weight, right? I stopped bodybuilding. I, I wasn't eating as much anymore, even though I sometimes still overate. Um, so I lost like a lot of the weight already and the, and, the, and the muscles and things, but I was still fit and training and things like that. And I got to the point where I'm like, if I continue with this, I'm going to kill myself with food, man. Like, I can't stop this stuff. I can't stop it. I, I'm hopelessly addicted to it in any way. And I was very aware that I was using it to deal with life emotionally, which... You know, just creates, reinforces the cycle. So I got really desperate. And one time I had like a three week long binge if I was really trying to be strict and stuff. And I was sitting in a lake watching a sunset and I was like, man, what am I going to do? Like, this will dominate my life. Like I have dreams, but if in my dream I'm still going to be addicted to food, then I'm screwed. 
Mm. So then I looked to my right and there were three guys, and I'll never forget it. Like one was eating a pizza, one was drinking a beer, and another guy was smoking a joint because, of course, it's the Netherlands, so it's fine. But then it hit me. If I want to, you know, if I'm addicted to alcohol and I want to stop drinking alcohol, I have to stop drinking alcohol, like completely. I can't switch from vodka to beer, so I got to stop. And if I'm smoking, I got to stop smoking completely to get rid of the nicotine and everything. And if I'm addicted to food, the pizza guy, I have to stop eating. Because I can't be trusted with food. And then it hit me, wait a minute, this screaming Texan dude on YouTube, this John Rose guy without a shirt, <laughs> that's always screaming, right? Like, he talked about juice fasting. That means you stop eating. It means you physically stop eating, and then maybe I can deal with this addiction thing, and it would clean out my body. And I, like, I'm like, this is probably it. So I was contemplating and contemplating, and I thought like, yeah, this is probably it. I have to stop eating. It made sense to me. I thought this is the way to do it. So I jumped on my bicycle and drove home and researched like until early, early morning hours. And then a couple days later, I started after I researched everything I could find. And I decided I would document it on YouTube because I knew no one who had done this. So I thought like, well, I'll spam the videos everywhere. Maybe people will come and support me and I can talk to someone and get more knowledge. Mm. And that's how it started. And that was June 27th, 2019. And I had no intention of going 120 days or, I don't know, uh, even, I just thought like, I'll just see how it goes. I thought I'll start with a week. And then after a couple of days, I had all kinds of stuff come out of me. I'm like, oh, maybe what the guy was saying is true. And then I just kept going and going and going. And at the same time, I was very aware, like, I'm dealing with this addiction. So I should be doing work about that. So I developed like strategies and things and thought about like, what will I deal with and how will I deal with it? Um, and that's how it started and that's how it went. And then it ended up being 120 days, which I had no inclination to do anything. That's just how it went. Mm. Yeah, amazing. And and how yeah, how how would you know when to stop a juice fast? Because a lot of people might be curious, like obviously you had no inclination to do 120 days, but how did you know to go that long? Well, when I did my first one, I knew almost nothing. I just found some videos online, documented as much as I could, made my own guideline and then followed it. And what I did was something that I did with bodybuilding as well. Um, I documented everything I did. So with bodybuilding, I would document every workout, every set, every weight, progression, how I was feeling, etc. I thought I'll apply the same thing to juicing. So that gave me a little insight about what was happening. So I documented everything. And so I, what I documented was how much am I drinking? And how am I feeling emotionally, physically? How's my sleep? Um, what's coming out of me? Very important because you got to eliminate mm. stuff because it's in your bowels. Um, how's my body changing? Okay. I took photos. Um, and that gave me a lot of information because at a certain point, you'll see patterns develop and repeat. This came out of me. I felt this way before. So the next time I could see, okay, well, I'm feeling like this. Last time this happened, maybe it will come out again. It did. Um, you documented my weight and everything, like muscle mass, water percentage, um, like fat mass, everything. You start to see information and patterns. And at a certain point at the end, I started to realize I have almost nothing coming out of me anymore. And I don't feel physically addicted to this food anymore either. I don't have no desire to eat anyway. And then also emotionally came to the point where I was like, yeah, well, I don't want to be stuck to a juice machine anymore. Like I would like to just go you know, grab some food, go out. So it's multiple factors like... Mm depending on your goals as well, but are you cleaning out? Is less coming out? Good. Um, are you dealing with any kind of addiction? Well, do you still feel like you want to eat or physically addicted? No, okay, great. Um, have you achieved other goals you like to achieve, like weight loss or whatever? And, um, you know, um, is, is there anything related to like, well, how are you feeling? When you combine those three, you'll get the answer. But most of the time with my clients as well, it's literally like, have your bowels emptied out? Are you uh, clean? And um, have we achieved the goal that you want with weight loss or whatever? And uh, changing your relationship to food, which we can talk about more later. And is mm. your physical addiction gone cool that you can stop? But this depends on like, that's the people I work with and that was my situation. But if you just want to lose weight and clean out your body, then literally just, eventually it will stop. There won't be solids coming out anymore. It's weird, but it stops. Yeah, so in terms of like, this stuff that's coming out so you're drinking these juices what 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 is this stuff because a lot of people say mucoid plaque other people say like old waste how, how would you describe it to someone who doesn't know what they're releasing when they're just drinking these like juices i don't know what it is man um 
I will never be able to say. I know what came out of me. I know what comes out of my clients. I know what came out of people that I talk to. But like people call it mucoid plaque. Um, but I saw so many different things come out of me that I can't really give it one name because people think like it's these long strands or stuff like that that's coming out. Um, I saw so many things like I saw like little pebbles with grooves in them. I saw things with holes in them. Um, I think I saw parasites come out, big chunks and pieces. I had some of these little, like these, these longer lines. I had um, all kinds of like rock hard things, like things that like, when I worked in a supermarket when I was younger, like you had these frozen chickens in the frozen aisle, like these whole chickens. And one time we, we mm. literally like, they were so hard you could throw them through one of these windows of the, of the doors. Of the, that's how hard that stuff was that came out of me after like 70 or 80 days of juicing. Like, I don't know what it is. I think like unlimited waste matter that just sticks around. It could be bacteria. It could be like fungal growth. It could be like whatever, like waste matter from the body, but it definitely isn't what you put in the juice wise. Like, I think it's like stuff from the, from the food, but it smells so bad. It, it oh, it's horrible. Um, but almost everybody has it in them depending on how much or how big. And the surprising thing is when I work with people, like some of the women I coach are really small, like they're like one meter 50, so like five foot something. They don't weigh much, like maybe a hundred pounds, like 45 or 40 kg. They have like 10 kg come out of them, like 20, 20 wow. pounds. It's crazy. So um, there's a lot in there. I don't know what it is, but from what I've experienced, it's unaluminated waste matter. And I've done multiple juice fests, of course. So the first one, all this nasty stuff came out. Then in between the first one and the second one, I did like four or five months of just experimenting with food. I ate everything under the sun just to see what it would do with my body. Like, how will I feel? Will I eat one time a day, two times a day, three times a day? Um, what will I do if I only eat the raw foods, so just fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds? What happens if I add uh, soups and other things? What happens if I add, I don't know, um, anything like from meats to the dairy to, to breads to like pastas, like I tried everything. And you really become very sensitive to what it's doing in your body. But what I noticed is not everything came out, which was a nightmare. Like I noticed I was gaining weight, mm. but I didn't look like I was gaining weight. And I tried junk food too to see if I was still addicted. I wasn't, which was good news. But it, oh, that was such a horrible experience. It made me feel like I was run over by a train. Um, but I noticed like I'm gaining weight, but I don't look like I'm gaining weight. And I remember this John Rose dude said like, yeah, well, I can gain like, I don't know what he said, like 10 pounds or something or 20 pounds. Um, just like that and then he stopped gaining weight and he said there's holes in your digestive tract so I was like oh that's not nice so I was like well let me do a second juice fest see what comes out if it's actually in there or not I want to see if it's true you know so I did a second juice fest and again I saw stuff come out but it was fresh and like I could see that it was what is in these holes because it was like these little pebbles with these grooves in it so mm. I realized I have diverticuli which is like these little holes in your digestive tract where stuff can get stuck so part of it is that too um, so I juiced that out again, but this time it didn't smell or was hard or like, it was just a little form. So then I realized, okay, there might be some truth to that. If things stuck around too long, they can form this plaque, this layer of layer of layer on your digestive tract that you then, you know, flush out. Then there's also people I know that took like these enzymes that break it down and they saw a lot of stuff come out too. So, um, what it exactly is, I don't know, but based on what I, my own experiences, I think it's the unaluminated waste matter that just dries up as a sponge and, you know, it starts polluting your body and there's mucus with it and everything and it could come in many different shapes, like I said. And if you have the holes, yeah, you're gonna plug it up with anything that takes too long to go through. So in my experience, there are foods that will definitely plug it up and then there's foods that don't. Mm. Mm. And, and I'm not sure, obviously it's a little bit hypothetical, you may not know the answer, but do you feel like you can heal the digestive system and do you feel like you can kind of repair those holes naturally of course, though, yeah i suppose i have no idea how telling unless you do a colonoscopy but it could also be in your small intestines but supposedly mm. according to the john rose guy you can and the way he tested mm. it i believe he didn't eat that's his theory right that you eat cooked food and that damages your body and then um that creates these holes too and then it sticks around because it digests too slow move through you really slowly because it's dehydrated and he didn't need to cook food for like I think 11 years and then he tried it again and he didn't gain weight I don't know hmm. <laughs> I don't know I don't know for me like I know which foods will stick around and are not good and I know which ones can digest fine and it's also trial and error 
Um, have they healed? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. I suppose so. I suppose so. Mm. Yeah, I, I would logically think so, but who, who knows, I guess. In terms of like absorption, do you see just with people you work with and other like stories and in, in yourself, like, have you noticed better like absorption, like you need less calories to maybe maintain your weight or yeah, do you feel like the juice juicing can help with that? Yeah, I have. Well, what I've noticed with juicing itself is that in the beginning, when I did my first one, I drank a lot of juice, like a lot, to flush things out, but also get the calories and the nutrients in. And that's an important thing I tell everyone. Like, you don't want to drink too little. You want to drink enough so you get nutrients and calories. Otherwise, you're not going to feel good. You don't have the energy. You can't focus. You're going to get cleanse reactions. You're going to get cravings, which will make you give up. And you're going to lose muscle, which you don't want. So you want to stimulate your muscle and, and get everything in so that your body doesn't purge it. So I drank a lot and a lot. And as my juice fest went, I noticed I didn't need as much anymore to feel the same goodness, if you will. So I noticed I needed on average like two, 300 calories less. I was like, oh, that's interesting. Then after my juice fast, and this is the mind fuck most people go in, like after your juice fast, you have these memories of how much to eat and how much you should eat and, and how often and stuff. And mm -hmm. you have to rediscover that because you haven't eaten in a couple months, if you do a long one. And um, your body's clean out, so you don't need as much. Because like, it's like, you know, throwing shit at a wall, like eventually something will stick and it keeps sticking and sticking. But just imagine if the wall has all kinds of holes and it could just absorb it easily without something blocking it. So I noticed I needed less food, definitely like less calories. If I started working out again much more then I would need a bit more. I also did experiments where I tried like eating like 3,000, 3,500 calories on raw foods and do nothing. I wasn't really gaining that much weight, so there's that. Um, but I noticed with my clients too, they need less. But there's also the pitfall where people start thinking like, well, I need way less, which then becomes too less. So you have to find your balance with mm. it. And in the beginning, your body needs to rebuild cut flora too. So like the microbiome and everything to digest things again, because it hasn't done that in months. So that also means that you can handle less food before you might get bloated or things like that, because it needs to get used to that. But in general, yeah, you need less, especially if you don't work out, you need to need way less, but you still need to make sure you get everything you need. And keep in mind that no matter what diet you eat, um, our soil isn't the best quality. So anywhere in the world. So it isn't as nutritious as you think it is, unless maybe you grow it yourself. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I've always wondered that about the soils because at the start of my journey, I was kind of maybe caught up with like concepts of like, you can get everything you need just from fruit or things like that. But like you say, we live in a modern world and it's, it, yeah, it's definitely a doubt in my mind, just in terms of like the actual uh, micronutrient content. Um, just just quickly, I know you've got a lot of great like free videos and guides and things, but for anyone who doesn't know like how much they should be drinking or what they should be drinking, how could they how could they work that out? Do you have like any kind of ratios or yeah, what what's like a general guide for people? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, on my channel, you'll find literally three hour documentary on how to do a juice fast. I have hundreds of videos about like how to do it and what to do. But I still get this question a lot. And the reason I made those videos is because I got that question a lot and I wanted to stop getting that question, but I still get it, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, what you have to do is, um, the first thing you do is calculate your basal metabolic rate. This is the, the amount of energy you expend when you do nothing, your couch potato. Now there's websites where you can calculate this. I would just take three different websites to take the average of it. Do that a couple times. Then you get the number of calories. Let's say in, in your example, it's it's 1800 calories. It's, it's pretty high, but whatever. We take that as an example. Cool, that's the minimum amount of calories I would need. For most people, it's around 1200 to 1300. So that's the amount of calories I need when I do nothing. Cool, then um, I'm gonna be active, right? Um, so I'm gonna work out, I'm gonna move, I'm gonna use my brain which uses calories. So let's say I add 500 on top of that for my activities and everything. Let's say a couple days I, you know, I work out more and then I'll up it. So it's based on your activities as well. So you're usually going to look at 1,800 to 2,000 calories for women and about 2,000 to 2,500 for men. Depending on what you do, right? can differ. Cool. Okay. Well, which, okay, how much juice do I need to drink? Well, you need to cover those calories. And that's very important. So then you're going to look at like juices. Okay. Well, orange juice is 450 calories or 400 for a liter, 32 ounce. Watermelon is about 280 to 300. Okay, cool. Um, carrot is about 350 to 400. Apples about 350 to 400. 
pineapples about 400, grapes is 600. This way you can start thinking, okay, that's the amount of calories. Calories isn't everything, I also need nutrients, so the ratio I always recommend is drink about four to six liters, five to six, five to six quarts. Um, but people then get confused, okay, well I drink that amount of cucumber juice, well there's nothing in there, so. Mm -hmm. Always what I recommend my clients is about 70 to 75% fruit juice and then you mix vegetables in. So A, you don't taste them, which is nice because I don't really, I'm not the biggest fan of vegetable juice. And then B, you get the calories and the nutrients at the same time. And then you drink five or six of those and you can make it as exotic as you want. Then you're good, you get your calories and your nutrients. Um, and that way you're covering everything you need. So you feel good, you have energy, you can focus. When you drink more, you clean up more of the body, you rehydrate it more. You're addressing nutritional deficiencies and at the same time you're making sure your muscle mass is safe because you're getting all the calories and the nutrients so your body doesn't have to purge that mm. and uh, i just did a, a free training online and i put it on youtube as well about losing weight most people limit their calories and nutrients and then they're not really losing the weight they want they're losing their muscle and then a very important thing also is um, take some supplements um, because we're all, almost everyone is deficient, depending no matter what diet you eat. Um, so take some things, there's certain things you can get from juices. Um, so you could take a multivitamin, you could take a couple things, but the ones I would recommend is definitely B12, K2, zinc, iodine, magnesium, K2, um, while you're at it, um, DHA, EPA, so the omega-6 and 3. Mm-hmm. And then you're good, and then you can also take a tablespoon of hemp oil or flaxseed oil or priya oil. Um, that will get you some fats too, and then you're usually good. And then you can just gauge and like how you're feeling. Okay, I feel I need more energy. Cool, I'll up my juices. I feel I'm good. I'm good. Some guys can drink more juice usually than women. Um, but I've had women who drank like eight to ten liters of juice just like guys. Um, but most of the time, women get like three or four sometimes. And then I'm like, well, you, may, you maybe need a little bit more, but also listen to your body, right? If it says go to McDonald's, don't listen to it. But if it's like, I don't want to drink that much juice, then maybe you can listen to it, you know? Mm. Yeah, I think that's very in-depth. I, th I think you covered a lot of bases there. And supplements, that's definitely something I've changed my opinion on and uh, re like, you know, over the past year. And it's, it's like probably one of the hottest topics like in the health space. Um, how do you... Let's start with like B12. What what would you? Uh, obviously, this isn't medical advice or anything disclaimer, like that. But disclaimer. Yeah. yeah. Um, for B12, uh, what what would you recommend? Because I've heard like methylcobalamine, but I know some people also say like the sublingual kind of under the tongue or injections. What are your thoughts on on B12? Well, supposedly, if you take the cyanocobalamin, that's made of cyanide, but I'm not sure if that's true. Um, Get a good quality one. And remember, it's made by a microbiome, like it's made by bacteria. So that means that it needs to be in good quality soil. So you better get a good quality one than a bad quality one. Um, the one I take has methylcobalamin in it, but it has like a, uh, wait, I'll get it. It's actually good for people to know this. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if this is mirrored, but let's see. So it has methylcobalamin in it and adenosylene cobalamin. I probably butchered that, but this is basically like a, um, yeah, it's mirrored. It's from Essential, a fun complement. It's their Essential package. Um, it has basically B12, D3, DHA, EPA, iodine, K2, zinc, magnesium, selenium, or selenium. This is what I recommend my clients too. This basically has everything you would need to supplement on a juice fast, but it's nice to have this too. But for years I took methylcobalamin just sublingually under the tongue just melt it mm -hmm. and i took that like twice a week that was like a, a thousand micrograms yeah twice a week mm. you could take the shot yeah, you can you can do anything you want um just make sure you're getting it in and this is the thing like i've worked with a lot of people and they had a lot of different diets but almost everybody is deficient in this stuff like just with supplements too it's just because the soil quality is really bad um, and they can fortify the foods even if you eat like um, animals or like different types of animal things or you eat plant-based whatever um, even the fortify like there's a reason they fortified because the animals can't get it anymore either some of them make it themselves so you have to be very aware and mindful about that that we're living in a deficient planet so you might as well get it but then again 
you know, is, 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 is in this really what they say it is? I don't know. I'm not a lab. So it's always guessing, but better be safe than sorry, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, even if, it, if, it's, if it's like placebo, like the placebo is still powerful. Um, and yeah, yeah, iodine is something also, like I know you mentioned quite a few, like selenium, magnesium, zinc, things like that. But iodine is something I've been like researching quite heavily recently because um, from my understanding, it, it's usually prevalent in like soils near the sea um, and obviously like anything to do with the sea. But how do you, how do you feel about iodine in like a raw diet or, or with juicing? Because I, I see that's, that's supposed to be one of the most common deficiencies. How, how do you feel about iodine? Well, I never thought about my feelings about iodine, but I do take it. <laughs> so what I usually do, I took kelp powder to get the iodine because I knew it's important for your thyroid. Um, but yeah, I'd rather take it. But here's the thing, like getting like seaweed from the sea, like the sea is one of the most polluted places. So I don't know about that. And, you know, it's not always practical here. I'm not near the sea, so I can't go to the sea and yank out some of that. So I think we should supplement it. But like I think at a certain point we get people get obsessed with supplements <laughs> where mm. like if you get too focused on it, I don't know if that's good, but that's why I just supplement it because if I can't get it from my diet, I'll just supplement it. And with a raw diet, it's a lot of deficiencies that come into play because people just eat fruits and vegetables, but the soil quality is depleted. So, I mean, if you're in the UK or whatever, like three quarters of yeah. the year, you're not getting anything that's local anyway, most of the time. So it's the same in the Netherlands where I grew up. Um, so yeah, iodine is important. I supplement it. You can do that with like a supplement where they, they, they take it and then put it in. You can do it with um, kelp powder. You can do it with um, some of these seaweeds or uh, sea moss, whatever you want, but I would definitely take it. Um, but this applies to whatever diet you have. Like it's important to get some supplements in that you might be low in. Um, and then some people say like, yeah, well, blood, blood and urine work, like especially blood work. This is what I make my clients do too, like take blood and urine work before they start their juice fest so that we know if something's going on or if there's a deficiency. But then some people say, yeah, well, well, it doesn't matter if it's in your blood or not. You need to do a cell or what is it, what is it called? Like a cell introspection to see if, if it's in like At a certain point, you know, it just becomes smoke and mirrors. You don't know, but I would definitely take it. Um, before, I also wasn't that much in supplementation because I was like food should get me everything you need then I took a couple of weeks to like look at like soil qualities and stuff and nutritional values in food I'm like oh that, that might not work actually so then I changed my my views on that mm. Mm. yeah I th yeah I think that's the thing if someone takes something and they experience benefits sometimes it's good to just kind of drop the dogma and and just <laughs> do what's best for you if you're enjoying the video this far, you'll like my free community full of like-minded people looking to get fit, vibrant, healthy, lean, happy, you name it, energetic. Yeah, so I'll leave that top link in the description. Enjoy the rest of the video and eat your fruit, baby. I had a dark map because you froze and I was like, hmm, suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dog so mag, raw vegans. The, the, the dogma is is everywhere, man, in every diet. I found it in bodybuilding. I found it in bodybuilding diet. I found it like during, my, during university, I was like at the college university where all the professional athletes from the Netherlands went basically. So they got special treatment and, you know, good dodge class and stuff and focus on training. There was dogma in everything there, in their diet, in, in their exercising and training. I found dogma in every single diet. I've tried everything, dude. Like I've tried only meat. I've tried... Um, keto i've tried separating everything i've tried um carnivore i've tried uh everything under the sun man all the plant-based stuff all the vegetarian stuff all the raw food stuff only fruit like everything everyone in every single of these groups you have dogmatic groups in every single one and um you gotta weed through that like even if in the raw food thing i don't consider myself raw foodist or raw vegan or whatever um, but there you'll find dogma too, where people say like vegetables are bad. They're going to stop detox. Um, there's people that say juice fasting is bad. It's junk food. Um, there's people that say you only should do water fasting. Only that heals you. There's people that say you should only eat fruit. And then there's people that say, don't eat bananas. They're too mucus forming. Don't eat avocados. Don't do like that never ends. So you got to find what works for you. And the dogma is a trap. It always is. And I feel that when you discover something that's helping you 
the tendency to go to dogma and go to the extreme is pretty easily because you're like, oh, this is great, oh, wow. And then you go there and then I feel you almost have to go to this little depth and then have to come out of it again, but some people don't. Now, if you go to these forums, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's also sad. Um, there's this Juice Fast group that I run on Facebook too, although I'm not that active there anymore, but it has like 10,000 members or something. And there's some people that come in there and I have to moderate that. I'm like, oh, like there's people that are saying like, if you eat more than once a day, you're addicted and you're, you're an addict, just like a heroin addict. And you can only eat like papaya and berries because that's the only food we're meant to eat. And I'm like, you know, this goes way too far. Like you have to be very careful and mindful about that because this can be a road that's very dangerous and damaging. And it's the same with juicing. Like uh, mm. some people drink only one liter because then this or that and... And they only drink watermelon juice for 200 days and are getting everything they need. Or you shouldn't supplement because we should get everything we need from uh, the soil. And this goes on and on and on. So you have to be very careful with this. Um, you have to find what works for you and don't get dogmatic because, you know, it, it's not necessarily that a diet is bad or whatever lifestyle you have. But if it becomes dogmatic, it, it goes to a corner where, you know, you're not going to have a good time. Mm. that's the thing i think people forget to have fun <laughs> on the yeah. journey they forget to like enjoy life they get caught up in like a belief system or or, or yeah these these kind of groups group think and and you just yeah. you forget why you're even doing it it's just clinging to an identity it's yeah it happened mad. to me with the yeah, same here. thing like uh for me that was my ticket out of like physical problems and and Maybe even food addiction. So I became the, the biggest raw vegan advocate ever, making videos about it, like being the typical uh, internet keyboard warrior. And, you know, was that me? No. But was that what I needed to do and be to get, probably get out of it? Maybe. And then with juice fasting too, I became a juice fast warrior. And I still stand by juice fasting. I think it's a great tool. But, you know, it's a tool. It's not for everyone, maybe. And it's not going to save the world, per se, like some people say. It's just something you use. And now I just rather enjoy my life have a good time have experiences including with food and um, you know live my life and let that be but it was the same with bodybuilding bodybuilding became my identity too just like for a time um, you know vegan or plant-based or vegetarian or whatever or, or even a carnivore became my identity and then I recently had an experience in life that lasted quite a while where my entire identity just went poof and then you realize oh None of that shit matters. So um, you have to be very aware of the fact that the thing that can help you and, and save you um, can also dig you in a hole where, you know, you, you don't even notice you're in a hole and you're just preaching there. And, you know, you got to mm -hmm. be uh, mindful about that. Always stay open, mindful, and don't forget the fun, like you said, it's so important. Like some yeah. people that I coach, they've done many, many juice fest trying, and then they come to me and they're like, it's not fun anymore. No wonder. You know, it's like you're fighting World War Two in your in your juice fest or in your diet, or like that's not fun. You know, um, that's that's not fun yeah. at all. So, I keep the fun. Sometimes you got to lose the fun to find it again, I suppose. Mm, definitely, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's almost like it ha you need that, like you say, like it happens for you. I think especially yeah. at the start of your journey, like like you say, something is really beneficial and it serves you, and then it stops serving you at a point, and you have to kind of accept. Maybe there's a new, better thing, or, or maybe I adapt this slightly, or, yeah. or maybe I've lost sight of the goal. Like, yeah. maybe I've got new goals. Yeah, yeah and, because, and... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. The, the, oh, sorry, the identity thing. Um, at a certain point, you've already stopped identifying with it, but you just don't want to let it go because it's what you know, it's familiar. And if you step away from it, what then? When you reach that point, you're far gone beyond, like... You know, it's, it's, it's not beneficial anymore. It can still be part of you, but you know, you gotta switch it up and change it. I reached that point many times with the raw foods thing and, uh, and the juicing and everything. And, um, you know, it, it's something you use in your life to change your life. And then you go on with your life. Just like with my clients, when with my clients, like I take them to a preparation phase for the juice fast and they analyze their relationship to food. That's the main thing we want to change, which is basically why are you using food, right? So there's a physical addiction, there's an emotional and mental side to your addiction. 
You're using food to suppress emotions. You're using food to push away emotions. You're using food to deal with life and whatever's coming your way with stressors, with things you don't want to think of and that remind you of something of the past. You, you don't want to deal with that. So you use food to stuff that down. Then throughout the juice fast, we clean our body, we analyze everything, we go through that. But then we change our relationship to food. So that means that we're going to use different tools to deal with life. So emotional regulation tools like breath work, uh, meditation, uh, specific movements, journaling, being in nature, um, you know, being with people that are like-minded, talking about it, like dealing with differently with your emotions and stuff. And as we go through this, we also start to make realizations about like, yeah, well, this is what I did with my relationship to food. This is what I did with food. This is how I dealt with life. This is how I treated myself. And I stuffed all that down. You start learning and dealing with that. And then at the end, and here comes the crux, and this is what I want to talk about. You got to have to go back to food, right? You got to have to go back to eating. But you haven't eaten for three, four months. So that's kind of, you know, far-fetched down there in the distance. So that's unfamiliar territory. And then comes the question, okay, well, that's gone. Who am I now? And how am I going to eat? And what is it going to say about me? What will my new relationship to food be? And everybody's tendency is to go to the extreme. Every single one of them. I don't know why. Like, I'm going to be the cleanest diet. I'm going to have the best diet. I'm never going to slip up. I'm never going to, you know, it's going to be military precision. Like, I'm like, no, 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 no. That's not fun. You're going to create an eating disorder straight out of the gate. So think about it. Like, now that's all gone. Like, who are you? What do you want to be? Okay, cool. What do you want to do in life? Great. How is your diet going to support you? And how is your social environment going to be incorporated in that? How are you going to have fun? How is this going to be social? Because food is social. You want to, you want to be social with it. How are you going to make sure that it, it basically not only hits and respects you on a physical, but also an emotional side? How are you going to make it, you know, worth living? How are you going to incorporate? Because it's going to be part of your life for the next 50, 60 years, right? Most people are coaching like 20, 30, some a little older. And then they start to realize, damn, yeah. Never thought about it that way. And this is the main important thing I tell people after the juice is like, think about it. What do you want to do? Because there's more to life than just bananas and mangoes, man. Like, um, you don't, you know, that's the thing with my clients. I tell them, like, you're not going to eat in the same way again because you're going to deal with life differently. You're not going to use food to deal with life. So that doesn't mean you can never eat a, a, whatever, a pizza or a piece of bread or a pasta or whatever. Like, you can eat anything you want. Get that out of your head. Just make sure that it's balanced and in a way that supports you in your life and that it's fun as well. And balance. Um, because you don't want to go from one eating disorder to the next. So fun, life, balance, and no extremes. And that depends on the person, right? What's extreme for one person is not extreme for another. But you've got to be mm. very, very careful with these things, because a juice fest is extreme. Any diet you take to, well, let's say the scale to 10, to solve something isn't extreme, whether you like it or not. So you've got to be very careful when you, you get out of the extreme, but you don't prolong that that's human tendency pendulum swings this way damn i gotta correct that swing it all the way to the it's not gonna help so that's what i've learned with this entire diet thing and i've gone through every diet with bodybuilding and everything body image diet image identity this identity that juice fasting the raw food coach the juice fast coach like none of that's you and none of that will last so Enjoy it while it lasts. Make it a version that supports you. And if it has to go, go. And then create something that you can carry with you throughout your life. So for me, yeah, I'll eat fruit and vegetables all my life probably. And I would like to eventually have my own place where I can grow them myself so I know what's you know, coming to my plate. But I'll eat different foods too. If I go to Italy, I'm going to eat a pizza. It's great there. If I go to somewhere else, I would love to eat the culture food. Why? Connect with it, enjoy it, but it's not going to make me spiral out of control or lose my mind about it or, you know, step away from the diet or the lifestyle I like to have, but I can include it there. And this is what I eventually realized. The, the raw food label, the raw vegan label was just a trap for me, uh, a box, a invisible cage. And I started to get like tendencies where I'm like, yeah, but a sweet potato is bad, or, you know, steamed vegetables is bad, or, you know, oh, if I eat this or that, it's not going to be good or right, or... That was the eating disorder I was going to, and I realized, oh, no, I don't want to be there. So this is what I tell my clients now, to be aware and mindful about that, too. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I, th I think having that mindset is just a lot healthier as well, because <laughs> yeah. often, if you, if you, if you, 
allow yourself, okay, I can eat whatever I want, and then occasionally you do, and you don't feel as good, then you're more likely to stick with the, the foods that make you feel the best anyway. And, you know, if you want to if you wanna eat other foods, that that's cool. Like, it's ultimately, at least you know the consequences. Like, you know, okay, I can eat this, I can have fun, maybe I feel a little bit groggy the next day, but ultimately, like, at least I have the freedom. Because if, if you have a goal in mind as well, like, of because a lot of people make the goal sticking to the label, <laughs> which is crazy. But if you have a goal in mind and it's like, I don't know, you, you're an athlete, but you want to stay fully raw. So I'm just going to fast for the day. Well, it's going to be detrimental for your performance. Like something like a steamed sweet potato. Yeah, maybe it's not optimal, but it's, it's going to, at least you're still going to have energy. So I agree a hundred percent. I think at the start of my journey, I think I see it. So I see it with so many people and obviously I've seen it in myself. I think, you just want to stick to this label so much, but it causes you so much damage. And yeah. if there's anyone who's just at the start of their journey, that's that's probably like the biggest takeaway for me. Don't get me wrong, I love raw foods, and I, I would ideally like to be 100% raw, like the best quality fruit. But if I occasionally have like steamed sweet potato, I, I don't beat myself up about it because you know people. I think people forget that negative thoughts create like toxins oh. within the body as well. Oh, yeah, good point. Mm. Um, that's a good point. Like your thoughts alone, like this is what I also have with like, when you clean out your body, you clean out your digestive tract. When I did my juice fest, I noticed all kinds of emotions and, and memories about situations I hadn't thought about for years or decades. And well, decades, it was like 24 at the time, so two decades, but whatever. <laughs> but, um, and I was like, why is this coming up? And eventually I started to realize they're, they're linked to the stuff coming out, which means that I put them in with the stuff that was put in. So your, your emotions, your energies, your feelings, yeah, they're all there, but your thoughts, they create things and you put them in, then they, they go in. So what goes in with pain comes out with pain, like emotions. What you put in with your food and that's attached to it. So if you're eating anxiously or emotionally, like that's going to be stored in there. It's going to go in. And if it doesn't come out, then it's going to come out when you cleanse it. Then it's going to come out with these emotions and feelings. So what you said about like, yeah, a sweet potato is not ideal or it's not going to be like that mindset alone is, is crazy to think about. Like, as a human, you're going to die. You're not going to escape that. One day your body dies, you go on, wherever that is. Everybody has a different view on that. Um, I, I know people that think, like, if I eat a sweet potato, it's going to end my life sooner. I'm like, damn. That's an eating disorder, dude. That's crazy. Like, sure, if it doesn't digest well, you don't feel fine with it, fine. But if you're, like, thinking about the sweet potato at, at the time you're eating it, like, oh, my God, this is not going to... Just mm. think about that. Like, be aware of that. It's, that's crazy. Just like if you eat, like if you only eat raw foods and you never eat cooked food and then you're going to eat it some once in a while. Yeah, of course, you're not going to feel great because your body's not used to digesting it. That's obviously. So it's going to feel heavier, stuff like this. But if you eat it consistently every now and then, like you're not going to feel that way anymore. You get, you get used to it. But just be aware. Everybody that's listening is watching this. I don't know how many people will, but be aware of what you're thinking about it. Like, if you're eating something, you're thinking like, oh my God, this is bad for me. Oh, I shouldn't eat this. Oh my God, no, this is going to this is gonna digest bad. Like, if you feel that, it's going to happen probably. But at the same time, that's not healthy. Sure, you, you shouldn't eat garbage and junk food or whatever. That's probably not good for you. But um, like, like, think about how you think about food. Like, I've known people that were literally afraid of a sweet potato or afraid of quinoa or afraid of a, of a pizza or whatever. I'm like, that's not healthy, man. Like, I'm going to say this straight up. Like, I've told this to my clients too, like... It's going to be healthier for you to every now and then eat a pizza than if you see one to, to get anxious and stress about it or if you take a bite of it and then, you know, you're going to worry about it and think it's bad or whatever. That's going to be worse than actually eating it and feeling fine and, you know, you're going to eat it once every blue moon or every week. It's such a different mindset. And th th that's the thing I see in the raw food community and, like, I don't like calling it that anyway, but this, this corner of, of diet land where people eat this way is, like, there's so many eating disorders. But then if you look at any diet corner, you have them everywhere. So, you know, just be a little more free, be a little bit more loose, be a little bit more okay. Like, um, I, for example, like to eat many things, but I always feel better with a big base of like fruits, vegetables, smoothies, things like that. But all the other stuff, I still eat to it. And I'm still open to eating all kinds of things. Like, um, you know, it doesn't matter to me that much. But this is a point where you eventually might get to or you might, you're not. What you also have to be very aware of is um, all these gurus online 
How much can you trust them? You don't know what they do in their free time, right? So the, the, I have so many stories. Like I know a lot of coaches. I'm not going to name names, but I know a lot of coaches that show a specific image online. But I know what they do in real life. I met them. I met them in Bali. I met them in other places. Like They're not what they say they are. So these images that are portrayed, you have to be very aware of too. And one of the ones is uh, the Robert Morse guy. I love his information. Mm. I put it in my program too, the iridology, the herbs. It's in there, entire herbal protocols. But he always touts the fruit and everything and stuff like that. But you, know, you also find videos where he says, yeah, well, good luck healing on fruit because it's, it's the soil quality and everything. It's not going to happen and vegetables and this and that. So I'm like, okay, strange. But then I also know he goes to the Indian every week. Like, I mean, like he talks about that too. So you have to be like, I, I don't think in, in our current world, any of this is sustainable. Um, on, on a long term, unless you grow maybe yourself in a very good soil quality. So be practical, have fun, and be very aware of the fact that a lot of it is smoke and mirrors too. A lot of it. And be very aware mm -hmm. of what you're thinking about food and everything, because eating disorder is right around the corner, right? Mm, definitely. Yeah, because I interviewed Dr. Morse and he even said himself near the end, like a little bit of cooked food here and there, like, yeah. you know, like it's, it's, <laughs> he says, uh, he, in, like you say, enjoys like Indian food. So like, ultimately, yeah, as we've touched on, like, oh, I think, oh, you're back. Um, yeah, as as like we've touched on, like, you know, the raw foods, the juicing, it's, it's going to cleanse you. But but like you say, I think I think that mindset is really, really harmful. Like yeah. I, I was there and I, I, <laughs> I, I fixated so much on diet. I think when you, when you don't have other goals and diet is just the only goal, it, it just becomes like a, an overcoming kind of uh, over consuming yeah. identity. And it, it's difficult because you're told like niche down. Um, like when I first created my YouTube channel, it, I wanted it to be like, you know, like raw foods, like fruitarian, all this stuff, like, because, you know, it's like more niche, but I think we're just, as humans, we're just so much more, we've got so many more aspects about ourselves rather than like these labels. So it's yeah. hard. How do you, how do you, how do you personally juggle that label? Cause obviously you're a juice coach or a juice fast coach. I'm not sure your exact like label, but how do you, yeah. How do you balance that? personally like because obviously you help people with that but how do you how do you kind of stay like sovereign <laughs> yeah i get your feeling man i totally get it it's funny that you say niche down and everything and then that's what i talked about like the invisible cage right you might have felt yourself in there too mm. i have to make this contact because that's the audience and blah 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 um i don't know i don't, I don't know like i've gone through such a change myself personally that i don't uh, like, i don't really know what the identity is now and i realize that identity is fluid anyway it comes and goes with the raw food thing, I, I used it in titles and stuff. And for a while, I identified with it heavily. And I even was like, diet is everything. It's the most important thing. And as my journey in life progressed and has progressed now, and I went through some stuff, um, I realized diet is just a little part. But there's so much more. Like you said, we are so much more. Um, you know, I've had this on my channel too. Where I'm like, the same exact ideas. I've talked to friends about it too. I'm like, I'm so much more than just food or diet or whatever, but that's the audience of the channel and things. And I like to make that and help people with it. Do I consider myself a juice fest coach? No, I, that's what I do. I help people with that. Um, is that what I want to do forever? No. Um, do I enjoy it? Yeah. What I would love to eventually do is give everything away for free and do something else and still like do free, free consultations or whatever. I love that because I love helping people with it. Do I identify as a juice fest coach? No. Do I identify as a raw food guy? No. Um, it's just something that I eat. Um, so it's hard to say that, you know. Like, um, I think through life we all go through this where we, we tie so much to an identity and, and a way of life and, and this is how I live and this is who I am. And then when life, you know, kicks the feet out of, under you and it all falls away, then you're like, hmm, now what? And uh, mm. that's what I've gone through. I'm still finding that and, and seeing that and realizing that you can give yourself an identity, but that's not really who you are. Because if that disappears, you're still here. Like, if you change your name, that's your label, right? That's your identity, Nathan, Dylan. Um, if you change your name, you're still here. Name's changed. So identity label changed. If you... Um, 
I don't know, uh, become an American citizen. You're suddenly an American, but it's just an identity. Like there's so much more behind life and who you are than you think behind your diet, behind everything. So I just can't identify with these things anymore. Like, um, and I, I even get, I still get triggered by people like commenting on some of the older videos where I eat like uh, potatoes and that's not raw. And I'm like, no, you moron. It's not, that's obviously the case. Why are you even commenting this? Why? Because they're identifying with it. Like they see everything else as that as evil. And I know I've been there. Mm. And the same with like anything, right? Like in life, it's as soon as you start identifying with it, it starts ru ruling your life. And I think that's a lesson that you need to learn in many areas of life. And diet is one of the easiest way to learn it. Um, or a business or being online on social media. Because on social media, you cannot escape the fact, you might have experienced this yourself, where you become the image. <laughs> like, if I look at some of my old videos, I'm like, who's that? I don't fucking know. Like, uh, <laughs> who's that? It changed so much. I don't even know who it is. And I, I, I realized, like, I was portraying the raw food, raw vegan guy when, to my heart, I already knew, like, it's not who I am. You know, it's not, it's not who I want to be or what, what, what my life is about, but... This is my way to reaching people that I can help. So I will, I'll do that. And that's still the case with juice fasting. Like I know so much about it. I, I can help people with it. And that's my main goal. I want to help people with it. And that means making some things that I've, you know, I've, I've beaten that horse dead many times now. I've made the same stuff. But it helps people. I still get the same questions. So I feel like, yeah, I want to help people with it. But I don't consider myself a juice fast coach or a foodist or this or that. Like, no, not really. No. I don't consider myself mm. a YouTuber or anything, really. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely an important mindset shift and distinction. Like, that's the thing. We can use, like, the, the terms and the kind of, like, th identity as, like, a tool. Like, yeah, like you say, maybe to attract people who need the help. Yeah. But, it's, yeah, it's so important. Like you say, you don't identify with it because... Yeah, it just then you're just putting on a persona. Like, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's... And oh. just just quickly... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Um, this goes maybe a little deeper, but Dylan or Nathan is a persona as well. It's not who you really are. <laughs> it's just your mm. ego, your construct, your concept of yourself. You could change it on a whim if you want to. Um, and I think a lot of people identify with what they're doing. And then when you identify with what you're doing, who you are, or how you're thinking, if that falls away, that's going to be painful. Like, I remember... Um, when I decided I'm not going to do that many juice fests anymore because this became a way of life too, right? I ended up doing so many juice fests and experimenting and I had fun with it that at a certain point I realized I'm always doing juice fasting just to, to clean out and clean out and clean out. So I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do that anymore. But I found it really hard to stop that because I identified with that, you know? Like I was like, yeah, but I have to clean out and I have to be clean and I have to be this example and I have to be that. And it was pretty painful to let that go. And then also with the raw food thing where I was like, well... You know, that it's, is that Nathan? Is that really who I am? Is that really... No, it's not. So I got to let that go. That was painful too because it's a part of me. It's something that I thought I was or who I was. I had to let that go and then discover more about me. Same with being a juice fest coach. I had to let that go for a while too because yes, that's what I do, but it's not who I am. Just like with YouTube, I, I had periods where I didn't upload for, for a year or so. Um, just didn't know what to make anymore because I made everything. It was painful to let that go too. So as soon as you start too much identifying with and too much being in one camp, it's going to be extremely painful to get out because you, you're going to kill a part of yourself, so to speak. So for everyone out there, be aware that if you are going to identify with a lifestyle or with anything to such a degree that it becomes you, <laughs> there will be a moment where it won't be you anymore. You have to get rid of it or change it or whatever. And that's going to be quite a hassle and painful not to scare anyone mm. because it can be beneficial, but just be mindful about it, you know, about this identity thing. Because it can all yeah, like 100%. be gone like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like you say, it's so painful because I, I remember like, you know, when I wanted to be just fruit, like fruitarian and yeah. but, but then you like... <laughs> You, you almost you almost get supported like people are like way to go keep going obviously you get yeah. haters and that but but then i'm looking back at old videos and i like some of i privated because i wasn't a big fan of the information i was sharing and right. my perception wasn't matching with reality like i was looking at myself i was the skinniest i've ever been yeah. stopped playing sports things like that just to kind of sit around and meditate all day which is cool but 
I, yeah, that, and it was just this, because I was living in the UK and I couldn't get like, I don't know, 3,000 calories of fruit or 4,000 calories because I was playing football, things like that. I'd actually stop playing football just or, yeah. or like stop doing something I enjoyed just to stick to the identity. And yeah. it sounds so silly, like saying it now, but there's, I, I see it even with just people in my like community, things like that, just people I interact with. Like they almost forget about life's other passions and yeah. and things they're into just to stick to this identity. And if if it means I have to have a sweet potato so I can fuel my body and s- still have energy, like yeah, I'm I'm going to choose that all day mm. until until you know. I could maybe get the jackfruits and things that maybe might make me feel a little bit better, but yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, that's a good point you make, man. Um, sacrificing yourself for an identity or an image or a perception of what you should do. And the problem here is maybe you've experienced this yourself. This is what I experienced. Is I started for a while because I had I wanted to use the raw foods and everything to get rid of food addiction, heal my body and whatnot. I started like rationalizing why I should do that and why I shouldn't do all the other things. Even though there might be things I enjoy or they would actually be the rational choice or the logical choice. I started not looking at that and only looking at what would confirm or conform to the thing that I was doing. And then mm. you become dogmatic and you, you ignore anything else. You're just in your own little world, which is fine for some times. But what I also did, I've been to, like I'm in Costa Rica now, but I've been, I lived in Spain. I've lived in um, Bali for, for quite a bit. I've I've been to Mexico, like, I've, I've access to really good quality fruit, but even then, just fruit's not enough. A, it's boring to me, at least it's boring to me, like, I can't eat that all day. Um, although there's really good, tasty fruit out there. Um, and the best fruit for some, for, for some reason I had in, in Spain, straight off the trees and stuff, but even then, it's not everything you would need. Even if you eat a lot of calories, there's not everything in you need, and it's just boring, and I would love to go to a restaurant every now and then, even if it's raw or whatever, or this or that, so... Remember that, and I'm talking to a previous version of myself, but also to other people, is that your lifestyle is something that's it's part of your life. It should enrich your life. It should make your life better, more fun, create wonderful opportunities, be social and everything. If it becomes something that's so limited, so limiting, and puts you in such a little box that there's nothing room for you, but for you and your bananas, then we got a problem, dude. <laughs> and that problem, whether you like it or not, is it's not the bananas or it's you. And only you can fix it. And when you start working through this and getting out of it, you become you feel guilty, like, oh I ate a sweet potato. Oh no, I oh I did this, but you have to work through that, I suppose. Um but yeah, the the diet identity is, is very, very strong and even the word diet, right? Like just just lifestyle in general, lifestyle is, is a pretty positive word, but the way people use it. But just, just use it to enhance your life, not to... And it can enhance your life to certain degrees, but then it becomes detrimental. So like we talked about before, the balance, right? The balance. Same with juice fasting, same with anything. Um, juice fasting, you can take to such extremes that you'll kill yourself. Or you can, you know, take it to such extremes that you keep on failing and failing and get in a cycle. Or you can use it as a tool, you use it once, and then you're done. Like looking back now at the 600 days I did, or over, I, I stopped counting, but... 450 or something of that probably were just me trying to be more clean and be more this and be more that and experimenting a little bit throughout the way. The rest, the bulk of that before was just testing and trialing because I wanted to coach people and know what I was doing. But after that, it became something it, it probably shouldn't have been. But it was, and I got experience from it. And I learned and I'm thankful for it. I'm grateful for it. But be mindful of that. And just like with YouTube, you know, I love it. But eventually I just started making videos for the sake of making videos because what else am I going to do with it? And I made the same videos over and over again. I didn't like it anymore. And it wasn't helping people much anymore. Like, it starts seeping into everything. So once you become aware of it in one thing, you can start seeing it in anything. So um, if you're aware of it, you can change your life, really, by just being, being more balanced and, you know, and being more aware of what you're doing with everything. Diet, mm. work, lifestyle, people. Um, but sometimes we need to go to extremes to find the balance again. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, mm-hmm. I definitely believe that we have to experience certain things firsthand just to just to come up, come out the other side stronger. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> even if at the time it's like, oh, what the, what's going on? Like, <laughs> well, you know, I look back fondly on that time, man. Like, I was mm. making presentations for my parents 
about like the diet and everything and trying to help them. I was I was screaming it from the roof to everybody and I, I thought I found the holy grail. And I look back at that fondly at that time, like it was an exciting and fun time. And I even look back fondly now at the times where I went to dark places because it helped me, it shaped me into where I am now. And I look back fondly at bodybuilding, you know, eating entire generations of chickens and stuff. And I'll get crucified for that statement, who cares? Like, I enjoyed that lifestyle, I enjoyed it. I wouldn't do it again, but I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed all of it, it's great. Um, it's part of me and my journey, but don't need it now. But yeah, all the positives and the negatives, so don't beat yourself up too much about it, anyone. Um, but just see it as your beautiful journey and you learn from it. And I wouldn't wish those experiences away for anything, not even the food addiction, because it brought me where I am now. So, you know, and even the journey I went through in the last year and a half or so, uh, where I, where I, well, basically saw my entire identity thing poof. I'm like, amazing journey. It wasn't fun when I went through it, but looking back at it now, it's like, amazing journey, great, wonderful, cool. Who knows what else is to come? So, see both sides of it, you know? Just with life and everything, I suppose. Yeah. Mm, definitely, yeah, I resonate with that. Um, I'm just getting conscious of the time. Mm. Um, so, I like to end with, like, rapid-fire questions. So, sure. let me just get them up. And yeah, obviously we can uh, direct the people at the end to what you've got going on with the juicing because you've got so many extensive resources. I didn't want to like parrot too much of that. Um, I think yeah, I think it's important to to touch on the other aspects of life as well. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, in terms of the uh, rapid fire questions, the idea is just um, clues in the name, <laughs> just answer as quickly as you can and be authentic. Um, okay, so number one, what's your favourite fruit? Dragon fruit. Mm -hmm. Any particular color or just? The ones in Bali, that taste good. Anywhere else, they taste like earth or nothing. <laughs> and second, yeah, I would true. say um, mango or figs straight from the tree, which I had. It was amazing. Mm, nice. Uh, describe yourself in one word. Oh, I, I got to say... At this moment, I'm, I'm discovering so much about myself that I, I don't know if I can. Discovery. Mm. Discovery. Continual, continual journey of discovery. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what is one book that everyone needs to read? Man. It's hard to say. Um, but the, the, the book that... Um, that, that helped me a lot. Um, it's by a guy online. And it's called um, Men's Work, Facing Your Inner Darkness and Shadow and Ending Self-Sabotage. That worked a lot. It's by Connor Beaton, but that's mainly for men. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? <laughs> Everything you want starts inside. And nothing on the outside can give you what you really want. You, only you can do that. Mm, I like that. What are three things that you can't live without? Oh, probably my body. I need it to be alive here. Um, my, my relationship with myself. And having wonderful and nice people around that you resonate with. Mm. Yeah, that's important. What's your greatest strength and what's your biggest weakness? They're the same. I never give up. So that means I will keep going and go to extremes, which can be the downside. But it can also mean that I can achieve what I want. Um, but it can also mean I can take things too far, as was evident with what we talked about. And uh, can lose sight of the bigger picture. But yeah, I never give up. So that's a big strength and I'll keep going until I can. Mm. Mm. Do you believe in having a purpose? If so, what's your purpose in life? Yes, I believe in having a purpose, but again, here I'm discovering it because before it was tied to old identities and things and different mindsets. And I'm rediscovering my purpose, but I can't say as of yet what it is. I have dreams, I have goals, and I think I get an inkling of what I want it to be. But again, m my concept of purpose might not be what life's purpose is for me. So finding the discovering what it is now but i'm getting there but yeah it's very healthy to mm. have one definitely 
Mm. And finally, what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful for uh, waking up in such a beautiful space and being able to do breathwork meditation and go for a walk in the jungle. Yeah. Nice, nice. And yeah, I appreciate your time and I'm sure the audience do. They've listened this far. And, you know, where, where can the people find you? Thank you. I appreciate being here. Um, they can find me on YouTube, uh, Nathan Mulder. Um, I have all kinds of resources on juice fasting, raw foods, free resources too that you can download. I have a master class you can find there too about how to break food addiction by doing a juice fast. I'm on Instagram too, but I'm not active there. I'm not doing anything with that. <laughs> So there's that. Um, I give live trainings every now and then, once every couple of weeks, uh, where you can join and ask questions too. You can always reach out. And um, yeah, if you want to do a juice first, you like to do that in group format, not alone, and you're dealing with food addiction, you want to break that, you've done a million of them, you want to do it once and for all, then my program's open too. You'll do that together with people who are all doing it at the same time. And uh, then we change this relationship to food as well. And create that new one at the end that's not about dogma, but about balance. So... That's basically all I'm doing and where you can find me. Amazing. Sounds good. I'm sure there'll be plenty of people who, yeah, just want that kind of group accountability. And, yeah, I, th I think life's just meant to be experienced with others. So, yeah, I'm sure that will Yeah, resonate. it is. And it is. It's cool. Um, sometimes you experience, you experience it alone, but, yeah, life alone is nice, but you, you kind of still do need people. So it's um, that's the best thing about doing anything together. Like, you're not alone. You can relate to people. You can connect with people then the best thing is to do it with people that are on the same mindset because they don't want you to fail because they know what it would mean if they fail. So they can really relate, they're compassionate. And you create this, this unit together where you want to succeed together. So they're going to hold you accountable and everything. It's, it's one of the most beautiful things. I personally joined, for example, a men's group and just being in a group with people, it's, uh, it's really is amazing. It adds something to it. So if you're going to do anything, change or something, if you want to do one-on-one -on -one with anyone, not just me or something, do it, but if you feel like I would love to do it together with people, go for it. It's an amazing experience. Mm. Great message. And yeah, I think we're in there. I appreciate everyone listening this far and I appreciate your time. It's been a great conversation. Thank you, Dylan. And You're yeah. a great interviewer. Thank you for your Thank you. Interview. Thank you for your time. Thanks. Peace and love everyone.